Hello, everybody. Welcome to Kiki's Chat Show. Today, the topic for today, the 24th of October, is something that affects every black person mm -hmm. in the diaspora, which is in the Western world. We get a lot of racism. The most I don't know whether it's worse or or what, but workplace racism is one of those situations where you can't get out of. You can't. Racism is there. It's in your face. Now, in cultures, this Western world, they have their own cultures. And in the American culture, they are overt. In Germany, I hear they are equally overt. But in Britain, it is covert. It is, they will smile at you and they will say thank you and they will be lovely to you. And, but at the back, they are scheming, plotting, planning, doing all those things. Now, I've got a guest here. You know my guest, my guest has been here before. And um, she is, you know, I mean, I kind of like, sometimes I, I need her all the time. <laughs> However, it's impossible to get her all the time because she's busy. Yeah? So, Nana Asensi. Mm -hmm. She was so helpful and impressive that I begged her to come again. <laughs> I... I even had to do insider dealings of getting my cousin to call her and all, you know, it was just crazy. However, so here she is. Now, if you don't know who Nana Asante is, I'll tell you, she was ex-mayor of Harrow. Was it on the Labour ticket or you were independent, independent but Labour? Independent? Racism? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. She, yeah. You know, so, and she's a passionate community activist. Nana is the secretary of IDPAD Coalition UK and interim secretary of Black Labour Movement UK. She is all those things and more. Now, Nana and I today are going to have a chat, but just a nice chat so that people become aware that racism is there. It's in your face. It's with you. It's on top of you. It's underneath your feet. However, it depends on how you deal with it. And also, we all have to know that, you know, it's there. You can't, it's like the color of your skin. You're black and therefore you have to expect it. Now, mm. if you came from, you said it, you said that if you, welcome to the show. Sometimes I experience workplace racism. Okay. Yeah, and I'll tell you how mine is. Okay, and as I said, the UK, they are not outwardly rude or anything. But Although they can be. They can be, they can be. There are a few people, even in my office, who are quite rude. No, well, when I say office, in the building, who are a little bit funny. You know, they... There's this woman, for example, who I have a, a group of friends, you know, different range, age ranges, different, uh, you know, mm -hmm. carriers, yeah, different ethnicities, but we're black, we're all black. And um, if we go to lunch or something, she would, one of the women would say, yeah, I mean, she's, the, the gang have gone out. Meanwhile, the, the the Caucasians go out together all the time. You know the group of friends they are. They go to the pub, they go to lunch, they do all sorts of things. But nobody calls them gangs. Mm -hmm. You see, so this is one. This same person also, she's got, you know, underlying undertones of rudeness. You know, but it's all in game. If you, the problem though is if you get cross and react, then you're the aggressor. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we're not allowed to sure. acknowledge yeah. that. And in fact, I call the racism against people of African heritage is Afrophobia. And I think we need to call it by its name. Afrophobia. Afrophobia. Mm -hmm. Because it's a, it's a racism against Africans. Yeah. So you've, 
and whether you're from the Caribbean, you're from the diaspora, mm -hmm. or you're from the African continent, yeah, it's the same racism. When the BNP is coming, they don't ask to see are you, where you are were you? born. <laughs> <laughs> All they know is that they see an African in front of them. And I think we also need to acknowledge our connection to the continent. Yeah, it's part of our fight back. And part of that fight back is acknowledging who we are. Yeah. Racism, if you don't define it or yeah. you don't differentiate it, then it's racism. Yeah. But once people start differentiating it, there's anti-Semitism, there's Islamophobia. Mm -hmm. What we need to say, the one against us, is Afrophobia. Afrophobia. And yeah. Afrophobia manifests itself. There are certain things they do to us, like what you've just described, calling you a gang, yeah. that they might not do to others. No. If you find a group of Jewish women together, nobody's going to call them a gang. No. But they'll do that to African yes, women. So we gang. need to call it what it is. It's Afrophobia. Yeah. Now, but I would just just said, oh, these people are covert. Yeah. I think, remember your Shakespeare. What did he say? There's daggers in men's smiles. Yes. So when these people, even Shakespeare captured that. Yes. The kind of hypocrisy yes. and thing. It's just part of a nature. And sometimes every culture has the way they behave, every ethnicity. And that is maybe one of theirs. But the recent thing in the news Indeed, shows yes. you that they can also be very overtly rude. Now, you see, there is something. something new it's something we experience and when you usually raise it people then get oh yeah you've heard the phrase white fragility mm -hmm. they get all offended oh are oh, you yes. calling me a racist mm -hmm. at the end of the day That's when you look at it there was the bystander effect they were mm -hmm. all watching mm -hmm. they did nothing about it mm -hmm. and for them to think that it was important to find out how the man was did we see anybody asking the lady? No. Is she all right? I didn't see From that. From what I understand, she was seventy. She is seventy-seven. Yes. So we're talking about a lady of a certain age, age who's due respect in our culture. In fact, once you've passed fifty, you have people carrying your bags, people calling you ma or auntie. 
is because we respect age, you know, longevity, it has its place. I mean, at the end of the day, for them to not even give her respect, that man should have been put off the plane if they had any respect for their African passengers. But obviously they didn't. No. And I think what is even worse is Ryanair has been taken aback by the fact that the video went viral. Yes. And so now that the clip has gone viral, they now have to respond. And their response, from what I understand, is, oh, we've reported it to Essex Police. Yes. Is that the only thing you can do? And Essex Police also, their response has been, oh, the Spanish authorities are investigating. I'm thinking this is, it's, it's just unbelievable. But then again, since I think this year, and I think for the past two years, and since Trump as well, it yes. seems as if people have now been given permission mm -hmm. to be rude, mm -hmm. to be obnoxious, mm -hmm. and to not abide by any of the common courtesies that we've come to expect. So I think it is part of that. That is what we are seeing. That's why people are being so overt. They believe they can say what they like, when they like. And also deep down, there's a sense of entitlement. Of course. It's as if, well, we are on this planet because they've given us permission. They forgot that this planet was not created just for them. It was created for the whole of mankind. Because the reality about racism, how stupid it is, is that there's only one human race. You know, there is only mm -hmm. one race. Mm -hmm. So this differentiation into which continent you come from, which color your skin is, it is one of those unbelievable things. And what strikes me now, I remember doing a black history or African history, as I prefer to call it, mm -hmm. month thing in a school. Mm -hmm. And a child, and I think it was a group of eight-year-olds, mm -hmm. and we're telling them about the Montgomery bus boycott and the Bristol bus boycott. And one of the children actually said, why didn't they want people to sit in the bus? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't they let somebody work in the, in the bus? Because the Bristol bus boycott took place because the Bristol Omnibus Company decided that we're good enough to sweep the buses, we're good enough to clean the buses, mm -hmm. but we were not good enough to drive or be conductors. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. And that is how come there was a boycott organized. And in fact, our Race Relations Act, which is now 50 years old this year, mm -hmm. the 1968 Act, came because of that Bristol bus boycott. Because what happened was, including Tony Benn and uh, um, Larry Constantine, who was the High Commissioner at the time mm -hmm. for Trinidad, they joined students and ordinary men and women and decided that we will not take the bus. And the boycott ended on the same day that Martin Luther King gave his I have a dream speech. You know, the march for jobs and equality and justice that took place in Washington. The bus boycott in Bristol took three, it was three months. And then they decided that uh, they're losing too much money and decided that, okay, we will employ Africans and Asians on the buses mm -hmm. as drivers and as conductors. Mm -hmm. But that was what happened, that it had to, it took a boycott, it took people coming together, not ignoring the problem, but dealing with it and saying, and then I must say that Labour was in opposition at the time mm -hmm. and decided that they promised that if they came into power, they would bring in Race Relations Act. And we got that in 1968. And that's 50 years this year. Wow. Mm -hmm. The thing is, people don't realise that even for us to be where we are in the Western world is hard won. People had to fight for, you know, like as a lady on the bus mm. who wouldn't sit at the back yeah, anymore, Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. And in the end, you know, it, it was, inter, it became national and then international news. And this is where we are. We can sit anywhere on the bus. There were times, and in fact, in the Conservative Party, there was a time they wanted poor people to sit with the castle. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny you should say that. Do you realize that there are buildings now, mm -hmm. you know, because there's, uh, we've been told that buildings ought to have mixed, um, mm -hmm. yeah, mixed uh, yeah. tenure. Yeah. They actually have doors that they, you know, so there's this building where people have bought and then they have people who are tenants. Mm -hmm. They actually have the cheek to say that some people should use the poor door. You're not, oh, you're, you're looking at me like that, yes. 
So if you're saying set with capital, well, right so it now. is a, right now in 2018, Britain, okay. this is one of the things that has come up. And when you tell some people, even Africans, that this is unacceptable, they turn around and say, but I've bought my flat. Why should a tenant use the same door as me? Not realizing that that is the thin edge of the wedge. It is one of those things that injustice, if you allow it in one area, it'll come to bite you in another. Of course. Of course, if you do not get it mainstreamed to be talked about, argued about, and corrected, then uh, how are we going to help ourselves? Absolutely. Okay. Now there's another story. Yeah. And this story, a gentleman called Black Youngster, mm -hmm. he goes to the bank mm -hmm. last week. He takes out money, mm -hmm. $200,000. Yeah. He goes, it's his bank. <clears throat> and this is an upscale, in an upscale area. Yeah. This is how it's described. So he goes, he takes his money out, and as he's walking towards the car, yes. Um, the police accost him, put him to the ground, oh dear. and ask him whether it's his money and where he took it from, where he got the money from. Now, it was because there was a tip up, a tip off from the bank manager uh, that this guy had come and taken so much money out of the bank. Is it because he is black that he cannot have 200,000? And it's his own money. I think it's an outrageous story. For me, what comes across is several things. Mm -hmm. First of all, this bank manager obviously does not know his customer. Or at least he's. it's outrageous that a bank manager should ring the police mm -hmm. when a customer has taken money out of his own bank account. Mm -hmm. If he had concerns, he should have done those investigations while the money was in the bank. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, what is even more galling, and I haven't heard a follow-up, is that whether this young man has now closed his account with this bank and moved his money to a bank run by Africans or people who will give him respect. Because what I would have expected the bank to do is that if your client is so eccentric that he prefers to have $200,000 in cash, you offer him a security escort. You don't call the police. Or if you're calling the police, you're calling them so that they escort him to wherever he's going so that he's safe. That's what you do for your client. You don't call uh, police to accost him as a criminal. I think it's really outrageous. But then the answer is in our hands. What are we doing in terms of supporting our own institutions? There are African-run banks, African-American-run banks. Has it occurred to somebody like him mm -hmm. to move his money? and make it clear to and even encourage others to boycott that bank withdraw their money african run banks how many are there in the areas where we live for example the bank i don't know whether my phone is ringing or not hold on let me just see it's not where i live the bank with which i bank oh my bank mm -hmm. i live in london my bank has um my bank has um, branches, but most of the branches are being closed. It's very difficult to actually go to a bank to do business. Like, for example, go to uh, near someone near my house. Or do you see what I mean? It's very difficult to, to do that. That's a catch-22. Mm -hmm. If you support the bank, Mm -hmm. They can open branches to suit customers. Okay. You know, if we continue not to support banks that are run by people who would even give you that, even I, I, what I'm trying to say is that there are people running banks. Mm -hmm. It is up to us if we're not, first of all, we should insist on correct treatment for whoever we bank with. Mm -hmm. But it is also in our interest to support African run banks because maybe we'll have more ability to put pressure on them mm -hmm. because we are talking about racism racism mm -hmm. is endemic it is in the way people are brought up mm -hmm. it's in the way they think so even when legislation is there to protect us mm -hmm. unless we insist on it 
often you'll find people behaving badly. This Ryanair behavior is so outrageous, it's unbelievable mm -hmm. that somebody should feel entitled to call somebody names. The person is a customer. Mm -hmm. The person has paid their ticket. Mm -hmm. But then what about the staff? The flight attendants didn't even see that this was illegal behavior. It was. Rather, they condoned it. My guest today is Nana Santi. She is an ex Harrow mayor. She is very staunch in the Labour Party. She is highly. I'm outside highly... the Labour Party at the moment. <laughs> I am still a Labour supporter. I'm very staunchly supporting uh, Jeremy, Labour, Jeremy uh, Corbyn's yeah, Labour. Yeah. But we're talking about racism. A group of us mm. made a complaint. They're very, you know, into the whole black cause and black members, etc. And yet, I was put in an office with another black person. We were of total, temper totally different, different temperament. temperament. She was very aggressive up that I got. And so she was really horrible to me. And it was in your face horrible. And they were all aware of it. They all saw it happen. And nobody addressed it. And I had to share an office, a small, mm. small space with this woman for years. Can you imagine? Can so imagine. there were times I went home very stressed, very unhappy. And I...
now going to be a, 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 an offence, a chargeable offence. If you can just imagine, say a fourth of all of their generation could hate black people because this this kind of behaviour is something that's been taught in old, you know, from the time that they were growing up. And all of a sudden, you've taught people to hate black people, and then all of a sudden, you're trying to tell people, oh, well, now you've got to love black people. You know, those things have already been in their mind, you know, in their conscious level, and that's what you need. And to make those changes from these people who are deeply embedded in racism and institutionalized mm. racism and all the things that goes on, you know, it's not really going to change until we as black people start going back to where we used to be, where we're fighting for these changes to happen. Mm. And, I know, hear you. We have to collectively start doing something. And as, you know, we were also talking about the young black man from America who took his money out. Yes. And then the bank manager sent the police on him. And this is where we need to. We have enough power in economics to make things work for us. And until we start changing those things economically and sticking together, the problem with us black people, we only want to be the only black thing to happen. We well, I hear you. But I think I think you've you've made very good points. We had to literally go to the Indian houses and we had to rent a bed. It was a mattress that or a bed that was rented to us. And that bed had to be shared by two people. One person would work night, one per person would work day. And we started young mm -hmm. in those times because we had things like the head boys and the snares who would attack us. Okay, um, Norma, so what we're talking about is, is there, it's moved on, but it's coming up again. And we're talking about the fact that it is happening now. Some of the issues which, you know, I, I think, I think um, Nana Tanti wants to reply to your, your comment. I think one of the very important things, you are right about what has been happening that there was a time, and I think sometimes, first of all, I think that one of the first steps is to first of all recognize that when we're talking about people from the African continent who are of African descent, let's call ourselves what we are, we're Africans. There was a time, yes, we used to fight, but some people have never stopped fighting. And I think it is unfair not to recognize that even now, there are people who are bringing people together, who are making it a point to fight the injustice. Um, I, if I just even cast back four years ago, you had people like Barack, black activists rising against the cuts, fighting to tell people that the 2014 Immigration Act was trouble. A lot of people couldn't be bothered. To them, it didn't affect them, so they were, okay, thank you very much. That was part of the problem. It's about people not recognizing that an injustice to one is an injustice to all. Mm -hmm. That if there is a race. My mother telling me she came here in 1947. Mm -hmm. In 1947, and she was doing nursing, when she was looking for a place to rent, she was finding it difficult. It was one of her patients. You know, what a lady whose baby she had delivered who allowed her to rent a room. And she was Irish. So it wasn't, it was this kind of thing. Yes, mm -hmm. we had it difficult and we had to work at doing, at changing the status quo. Mm -hmm. But the police didn't do us any favors. Mm -hmm. They didn't decide it was illegal to be racist. It was the Race Relations Act, which we helped to bring about mm -hmm. because of the boycott in Bristol and because of the promises made by a Labour, gov a Labour uh, uh, party in opposition. 
So it was Harold Wilson's uh, people. When they got to government 50 years ago, they brought in the Race Relations Act. So 1968. So when people say things like, you know, why do black people vote Labour? This is one of the reasons, because, you know, in this country, if you really want to look at it properly, without the Labour Party, black people would be nowhere. Yes. But we need to also be realistic. I'm a Labour supporter. I'm a Labour voter. I used to be a Labour councillor. I'm 100% a Corbynista. What I'll say is that we also need to not be too rosy. Mm -hmm. The Labour Party, I believe, is a party for African people mm -hmm. and for Asians and for mm -hmm. anybody progressive. Yeah. However, we need to also remember that it's the same Labour Party that brought in the Race Relations Act that also brought in the Immigration Act. So the, 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 the mixture of policies, because again, the same Labour Party, um, how would I call it, the Labour Party machinery. machinery is born out of this racist country. Mm -hmm. And whether people, people will feel, ooh, she's saying we're racist. Yes, you are. There's an institutional racism. Oh. In, in, in some of the West African countries, I don't know about the other oh, side. Oh, in the Caribbean as well. Some uh, people do that. They take them there so that they learn a little bit about discipline. They understand. They accept who they are. And and when I say accept, don't get it wrong. You have to know who you are. The word accept is not a negative. It is a, a very positive. positive positive. So that you are confident within yourself. There are times when people make racial slurs or people say things that I don't like. And I don't really care. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. It's just that sometimes you can see that a certain bitter and twisted person wants to carry on with their negativity and, you know, nonsense. Mm. And, then, and then I get quite cross. But generally, all of the undertones, all of their behaviors, all of the things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis, Racism is, is, is there, and you have to know it. You, can, you have to identify it. You have to be careful. You have to, you know, as a black person, it's like you're in a, in an, a subconscious mind field. Mm. I, I don't disagree with that. I would say that <laughs> when, no, because I think it's a good characterization that yeah. It begins with us fighting this fight yeah. is about for me it's about recognizing first of all that you are an african and mm. be a proud african no yeah. matter where you come from yeah. so no matter whether you're born here you're born in the caribbean you are an african and take that with pride because you stand on the shoulders of giants of course. if you think of nana of the maroons yes. she was nobody's nanny she's yeah. nana of the maroons yes. she came from asante that's who she is, somebody from a good lineage who had this experience of fighting wars, which mm -hmm. is why she and her brothers were able to fight. Mm -hmm. This is where it's coming from. Yeah. It's about knowing that Ya Santua is an ancestor. And I'm naming women because it is, in a sense, our recognizing what we owe our mothers. That is how important it is. Last week, we buried Dame Betty Asafwaje. Mm -hmm. It's about recognizing what our people do, how we care, how we are. And it is somebody like Dame, she was a very proud Ghanaian. She knew who she was. Living here, doing that, she knew that she would bring her values into the system. She found that 
she thought that people didn't care enough about people. Mm -hmm. So she would do the hospital visiting, mm -hmm. visiting the vulnerable, visiting older people that people were neglecting mm -hmm. because she felt that in our culture, mm -hmm. we value those who are older mm -hmm. because they have lived, they have a wealth of experience that we can share. And I think this confidence comes from, as you've rightly said, knowing who you are, mm -hmm. knowing that you don't come from any lesser culture. And we have to even check ourselves about language mm -hmm. that maybe a lot of us are comfortable with black. And I'm comfortable with black when it comes to black power, mm -hmm. black, uh, you know. So black is not a negative. Mm -hmm. However, we must know that there's no blackistan, but there's Africa. Mm -hmm. So we need to maybe recognize that we are African just as our Asian brothers and sisters know that they are Asian. Some of them have never stepped foot on the Asian continent. Mm. They have, were either born in East Africa mm -hmm. or born here, mm -hmm. but they know they are Asian. Mm -hmm. We need to learn that confidence that there's nothing wrong with claiming the continent. There's nothing wrong with teaching your children your language. That there's is also a good thing. There's nothing wrong with letting your children know that they are also part of the jigsaw of community, of Absolutely. country, of a continent, of world. You know, I mean, I think children are totally disenfranchised in this country because they are made... You know, do, do you know that there are times when... And we've gone to a meeting with other people. And every time I said something... He would translate. He would say, what What Candy's trying to say is... Yeah, he would translate. He would say the same <laughs> thing. And I'm like, eh, hello. So we come out of the meeting and I told him, don't you ever do that again. Have you not got any original thought? But really, what he was doing was, he was trying to... And we were all speaking English, that's one. Mm -hmm. So how come you understood what I am saying and you are trying to translate it to them? What language were we speaking? Were we speaking our work language that we speak? You know, but it's it's a black and white thing. And I, mm -hmm. and I, you see, and this is workplace racism. This is racism with him trying to protect me. Or, or, or something. Or himself. Because it could, it could also be that his problem is he felt inadequate near you. Oh so God. by being your translator and being your uchiami, as they say in Ghana, mm -hmm. you know, being the one who was <laughs> rephrasing yeah. and yeah. echoing what you Linguist. were saying, Chief he was Linguist. taking some of the glory. Because maybe he couldn't string a sentence together the way you do. So he was helping me. No, he was helping himself. I think sometimes <laughs> look at it that way. No, he, he needed himself. that confidence to say to the others, you see this brilliant woman and the way in which she's speaking. I have a take on what she's saying. Let me tell you what she's saying, just in case you've missed it. Because I understand. Yes. the african with, with big, big lips, lips and with, very black with a pot but, belly but listen to this that sometimes we forget who goes and tans themselves they when do. the sun comes out who wants to change their complexion they do who now uses uh, whatever they use to, to pump make their, their lips, lips fuller mm. Stop it. so deep down you see the very thing that they caricature and they seem to be mocking it's what they want. What they want it. You know, to the extent that there are people actually pumping their backsides as well. Mm. I mean, come on. These are things they mocked as if, oh, look at them. But it's actually something they envy. And then we need to understand that there is something about the African shape. 
-hmm. the African color, mm -hmm. the African features. Mm -hmm. Somebody's saying collagen filler. <laughs> well, collagen filler is what they might call it. Yeah. Whatever they use to yeah. pump. Yeah. We you that you see what is is the imbalance is the fact that someone is rude to you or says something to you especially in the workplace and then in the end the tables get turned because you were aggressive or you were empty, but that's where we one. need to work with others and for me i always say join a union and it's worse if it's happening within the union no no but even if it's happening within the union join another union to deal with your union and i will say that because the structures are there but we need to use them but we also need to understand that you do not fight these battles alone you need to have comrades and often we've bought into this individualistic uh mantra mm -hmm. so a lot of people want to be like uh the caller said the only black, black in the village, village or the only african in the village India, yeah. and if you want to do that and i remember that from little britain the mm. only one in the yeah. you want to be the first the only yeah. well then you will be a target you will but if you learn to stand with others mm -hmm. you learn to join forces then when they come at you and say you've got a chip on your shoulder you'll have others say no i'm looking at this this is what it looks like but if you join forces and you're a gang they might, but you see, you, you, they might call you a gang. You say, yes, we're a gang for justice. Mm. S turn that on them. Mm -hmm. Yes, this gang believes in justice. We are fighting for justice, and this gang needs to stand together because you're a mob that doesn't believe in justice, and you believe in trampling over us. You're a mob. I must remember that. You're a mob. Absolutely. Yeah, mob. I must mm. use that. Mob justice. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They are mob. Um, we have to also learn this art of using words the yeah, way that they do. They do well. They don't because they don't even know how to speak their own language. We have to learn this thing that we were taught <laughs> to appreciate words, to you know, to read, and then to throw these words up mm -hmm. and become the grills that we are not. Because not all of us were were taught to say things, but we need to learn it. And you know, it's like when you just at the beginning when you were saying that they are hypocrites and they smile with you and yet they mm -hmm. I remember Shakespeare, there's daggers and men's smiles. Yes. Yeah, you need good. to remember that. And you know, he put it well. They are not that uh it's not new. It is a human yeah, failing. Nature. Yeah, and we need to just recognize it for what it is. Yeah. We know we do. Now, the other thing is, one of my concerns as well, we are running out of time, but I needed to, I need young people, people, parents, especially if you're listening on the show and you have children, you need to know that it is your responsibility to empower your children. Absolutely. Now, there are children who are told that they will not amount to anything. It Yeah. All of that. Now, parents need to try as much as possible to instill in your child, to discipline them, and I'm not saying smack them or anything, but, you know, to have a chat smack with them. them if they need it. Yeah, but they need to talk to their children but to understand. But you need understand. to maybe put your children in a Saturday school. Yeah. That is what, you know, we are not all teachers. No. We are not all gifted in able to do that. With, yeah. But there are people who are. Who we need can. to support those community ventures. Yes. That Saturday schools came about simply because, yes, in schools, our children were being labeled. Yeah. But in a Saturday school, they will be taught history mm -hmm. they'll be 
In fact, they'll be given aspiration because mm -hmm. nobody will accept mediocrity. No. They will insist that they can do better. They will insist that they've got a brain and they need to use it. Mm -hmm. And that is the beauty of working with community and supporting Saturday schools. Yeah. If you send your child there, they will instill in that child a love of learning and a desire to achieve, mm -hmm. which is important. If the school won't do it, we need to do it. So people, my people, we need to instill in our children who they are, where they come from. We need to teach them their family history. If you don't know the history of your Now, who told these children that it wasn't hip to study? It wasn't hip to... The whoever told you is a liar. <laughs> a dumb, plastic liar. You need to learn, people. And parents, you need to help your children. And if you can't do it, that's fine. Take them to Saturday school. Take them to somewhere. Let them learn a language. The language of your forefathers. Let them be excited. When you're driving with your children, I do... It's on Instagram. People are saying it all over the place. We are proud. We are mountain people. We come from a mountain and we're very proud. In fact, our history is a little bit sad because when the white man came, when they were collecting the slaves and everything, we were not part of it because we were up on the mountain. We used to throw things at them. <laughs> and then afterwards, you know, they would they tried to bring us down, and that is why we live on the plain. Okay. But it, it, it was, and, and they came with guns and everything. So we still maintain our mountain, and it's still there. People go up to their mm. ancestral points. And tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow that they go up the mountain to greet their ancestors and all of that. Now, this is our history. I tell them every year. Okay. Yes. Our main food was millet. So if someone is coming to bring them millet, this is when we share it and we eat it. Just put two or three in your mouth. Okay. Yes. So this for me is my my tribal story. And they know they are princes from where they come from. This is how it has to be. Absolutely. They don't have to be princes. 
they know if you're not you're not but you know you are somebody Absolutely. from somewhere and everyone needs to know this so you know yes we we have an hour and we have so much information about racism but you know the hour is up when we can't we can't do it so we're gonna keep talking about it though aren't we Absolutely. Now, Nana Asante is even saying, and she said, and I'm reiterating, that there's racism even in her grouping. There's racism everywhere. There's workplace, with school, classroom, racism. There's racism, racism, racism. We need to rise above it. Absolutely. People, I'm going to play a song. It's called Angela. It's a happy song. After that, we will go into the news. Next week, we shall come back and talk about polygamy. And it's different levels of polygamy. But race is going to be on the agenda every month. And I want people to come out and tell us what they Like the caller um, Norma said about the race and how she experienced it. We're going to go through it. We have to share in it. We have to talk about it. Because race sometimes is not good. Angela, hey, Angela. 